Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, we are a minimalist family of seven. So myself and my husband and our five children and we are living big with less. And today I'm gonna give you my top five simple frugal tips to if you are having a broke Christmas, if you've got little or no money to spend, I have five tips to make this festive season the best. The first thing you should do, and this should be the same whether you're broke or not, is to set a budget. So every year you should decide what you wanna spend before you start buying presents or food, and then stick to that budget so you know that you are free to spend that money and you won't feel guilty after Christmas. In tying in with that, do not go into debt. It is really important that you live within your means and spend the money that you have. Don't try and impress somebody else. You have that money, it's yours, and you should be able to spend it how you like, but don't borrow. In talking about budgeting, sometimes we can have a Christmas budget, which is awesome, but you might also have already your normal food budget or a clothing budget or a school budget for your kids. What you can do is borrow from those budgets for Christmas gifts that you are already going to use within that budget. So for example, why not buy your kids some new swimmers or whatever they might need outfit wise from your clothing budget, wrap it up. It's still within what you were already going to spend. It's just, it's doubling as a Christmas gift. The same could be said for food over the holidays. Can you purchase stuff from the grocery store within your normally grocery budget to cover those things that you're going to need for Christmas or for gift giving? Now the second one is a little bit controversial, but I can say this is our first year as a family being completely debt free. So we are now debt free and we have our three to six month emergency fund. So this year our budget isn't as tight as it been, has been in the past, but for like the last seven years it has been tight. So I've become kind of like a pro at making Christmas happen on a really tight budget. So. I have personally done this one. It is buy secondhand. Now, it doesn't have to be gross or anything like that. Today's day and age with things like, in Australia we have Gumtree, but I know that you Americans have Craigslist. People have lightly used items, sometimes new in the box, for half the price, if not more, of what it would be to buy it from a store. This is working doubly it's good for the environment because we're keeping stuff out of landfill and it's good for you because you're able to buy something that you yourself or your kids or a loved one really wants but you can't afford to buy it full price. We have bought bikes, we have bought scooters, we have bought doll's houses, all these beautiful things secondhand. I make sure that we shine them up, make them look lovely, put the big bow on it. Our kids have never worried about it. My husband is a tech genius. So in the past, he's even been given some old computers that were not working or partially working. He fixed them all up and he actually blessed not just our kids, but our nieces and nephews with these amazing gifts that we never would have been able to buy new for almost nothing except for the price of a couple of parts. We've also done different gaming machines that my husband's been able to purchase and then fix up. There is absolutely no shame in it. Do it, make it lovely, and then give it to your friends and family. Number three is change the format. So for example, if in previous years your kids have been used to a lot of gifts and this is gonna be the first time that it's not, or you have a big family event and there's lots of gift giving and you wanna try and keep up, maybe can I suggest let's change the format. So what I have done some years is actually sent my kids on a scavenger hunt. So instead of coming out and expecting a big pile of presents, they found a clue and then they went around the house and they collected small gifts on the way and then at the end, their big present was actually a secondhand trampoline, which they loved. But then it took the focus off this big pile of presents and put it on this great adventure that they had. You could also do things like getting out some of their other toys and nestling, nestling the presents in with them, 
or if they've received some other Christmas presents from other holiday events, get those out. They're still gifts that they receive for Christmas. Get them out and put the presents with them. That gives kids a really big overview of everything they've received. Another thing that we found really helpful is slow down the present opening. Get your kids to open one present at a time. Let them look through the presents and open them instead of it becoming this big unwrapping fest. This also works really well for food. So if you're used to having a big lunch or a big dinner, maybe you could switch it up this year and go for something that's a little bit less expensive. Things like a, a Christmas breakfast where you put on all different kinds of bagels and jams and waffles and pancakes, those are all really affordable and you don't need a large roast or anything like that to make it really special. You could also do a Christmas dessert night or a Christmas afternoon tea with your friends and family just to try and reduce the amount that you have to spend on a big meal. Number four is acts of service. If you are really struggling, I bet you have some amazing talents that you could share with your friends and family and they would actually really love it. If you're an artist, can you paint them a special custom painting or do something around their home if you're handy. Um, for me, can I come and organize something? Can I come and babysit for you? you know, if you have friends that you want to buy for, what better gift can you give them than let us come around, let us come and love on your kids so you two can go and have a night off. That would be my dream gift. So sometimes if you think out of the box, think about what your talents are. Can I come and wash your car? Can I cut your hair? All those sorts of things. Obviously, you're going to need to tailor this to the relationship that you have. It's probably easier with those closer friends and family, but I guarantee you those gifts can be just as special, if not more, than something you bought from a store. Number five, the last tip that I have for you is create the feeling of Christmas without spending the money. Can you go to the library and wrap up some Christmas books that you open every night leading up until Christmas? That's almost free. It's such a sweet memory for your kids. Can you watch a Christmas movie from the library or Netflix together with some snacks and popcorn? Can you all pile into the couch or the bed and have a really lovely time? My sister is a huge gift person. She loves to receive gifts and she love, love, loves to give them. And so if you have people in your life that are like that, don't be afraid of giving them something that's really thoughtful because it will mean the most to them, more than it would mean to anybody else. So for example, my sister, if I wrap her gifts really beautifully, if I write her a beautiful card, anything like that, she notices every last detail. I actually go to a lot of effort even to wrap my kids stuff so that those, because we're having less gifts, that those gifts will feel super special. Another thing you can do is look out for cheap or free events in your area for Christmas. Where we live is a small town, but there is still Christmas carols. You can go and see Santa. You can go without buying the photo or some department stores even give it to you for free. Can you go and visit with people? Can you take some cookies to an, uh, an aged care home? All of these things help to make the season feel full and happy and festive without actually spending any money. So guys, I would absolutely love to hear from you in the comments. I know you're gonna have some great tips. Now, being broke at Christmas, it might be because you have no money, it might be because you're paying off a big load of debt, it might be that you're saving for something really important or that something unexpected has come up. There is no shame in having little to spend at Christmas. You are doing what is financially best for you and your family. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. We'd absolutely love to have you. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Thank you.